I'm working on getting nice, crisp, thin line rendering in my system, and I want to work on the anti-aliasing, especially when it's sliding across pixels. So far, I've tried using multi-sample anti-aliasing, and I found a couple of tricks that made that work out pretty nicely. Today, I want to try a different technique, which would be to do the geometry single-sampled, but to use a shader to calculate pixel coverage. So let's give that a shot and see what kind of results I can get from that. One thing I'm doing here that might be a little surprising is I'm using a assumption that my line is one pixel width. And so I'm not just making a shader, but I'm making a shader that only works for these vertical line segments. Now, what I'm going to do is once I figure out if that is a useful constraint, I'll see if I can remove that constraint by generalizing the effect. But adding that in now lets me uh, sort of avoid doing extra plumbing so that I can see if the math works out and then I can figure out how to rearrange the math so that the same, uh, uh, you know, arithmetic is occurring, but with the data flowing through in a different way later. All right, so that's anti-aliasing by the x-axis. And now that I've got the math and coordinates all figured out, I think it'd be pretty easy to get that working on both x and y axis for precise rectangles. Obviously, a part of the reason I wasn't doing this in the previous arc when I was working on my graphic system is that I want to have rounded rectangles too. And so computing the pixel coverage gets a lot trickier and I need a slightly different heuristic. But this is actually ex computing the exact amount of the pixel that is covered by just clipping two rectangles and then you know multiplying the width and height to find out how much of a, a unit is actually covered in each pixel. So that's neat. And using that, I was able to play around with it and confirm some ideas and modify some ideas I had about what I saw when I was using multi-sample anti-aliasing. I'm going to take a minute here to switch back and forth between them, sort of see the results I can get from each flavor of anti-aliasing I've done so far and tweak the parameters of the thicknesses of the lines to get different effects there and see how they sort of compare. And then I think we'll wrap it up. It's kind of a short video today, but this wasn't too much of a difficult uh, experiment to run. And I think having done this and thought about it for a bit, I've got an idea of what we need to do or what I want to try at least next. So next time we'll get started on uh, maybe a technique that will make it possible to get everything that I want out of this, sort of balancing the different constraints I'm trying to meet here. So I'll, I'll talk about that more next time. Let's, let's play with this and see what kind of results I can get for now. I thought I would be done after that, but while I was comparing these, I decided to check out the precise values in my little value dumper, and I discovered a mysterious phenomenon. These are the values coming back when I use multi-sampling with eight samples per fragment. I would have expected to see pixels that clump around eight different intensities, 0, 1 8, 2 8, 3 8, all the way up to full intensity, you know, 1.0. But instead what I see are still eight clumps, but they're not evenly spaced out like that. 
Instead, these clumps kind of look like square roots of those values or something close to that. Some of the values aren't very good approximations of square roots, but towards the bottom and top of the range, they are good approximations. It might be a little bit more or less than two that I need to put into that root to make it pop out, which makes it sound like an sRGB correction, but I'm not using any sRGB features that I, I'm aware of automatically. It might be that OpenGL just does this all the time for the resolve of a multi-sample frame buffer, but I don't know anything about that and I can't find anything about it online. It certainly doesn't sound like it's supposed to be doing this, but I also can't find it in the spec anywhere how it says the resolve is supposed to happen. And all I can find are people on Stack Exchange claiming that it blends linearly, which I'm clearly seeing it doesn't. So if anyone know, out there knows anything about how multi-samples are supposed to resolve in OpenGL and you know can point me to the spec or you know about the, the rule it's actually implementing here, if it's sRGB correction or something slightly different is going on, I'd love to know more about it. It's certainly a big mystery to me.